Hi there, welcome to the p and &E Home Exercise Series. My name's Dr. Tom Little. Now, normally we do a circuit together, but I thought instead this week I'd show you some more advanced exercises that you can still achieve at home. And that's gonna be really important if you're an athlete, obviously, so people I'm used to working with, but also members of the general public are really into the fitness training. So it's gonna, these exercises are gonna be appropriate for lots of you at home. If you're an absolute beginner though, you're probably gonna to have to avoid these and use just more simple exercises. So we're gonna start with some leg exercises, go on to the core and then finish with some upper body exercises. So starting with the legs, Really simply at home, if you jump as high as you can or sprint as high as you can, they are brilliant advanced power exercises. You cannot replicate the power of those exercises with any kind of normal weight or strength exercise unless you're an advanced Olympic lifter. So remember, it doesn't have to be just forwards and backwards or up and down. You can do laterals, but backwards, forwards, as long as you're doing it as hard as you can, you're gonna maximize that power, which is great for athletes but you're also gonna burn a lot of calories, which is great for the general public as well. So moving on to more strength-based exercises now. For strength, we really need a high load if we're gonna do advanced exercises. So there's a couple of ways we can do that at home. We can try and find things that are gonna add weight. So for the legs, quite simply, you can find things like bottles, tins, milk, whatever it is, put them into a bag, and then get that as heavy as you need, and then just put it on your back and do your exercises. Kids can replace that quite nicely, but they tend to move around too much. You can use heavy objects around the house, so like tins of paint can be appropriate, and you can double things up like that. So I'm gonna show you some leg exercises now, a range of different things for different objects here. So the first one I'm gonna show you is what's called a pistol squat. So the legs going in front here, and we're just squatting as normal around there. So with any squat, we wanna keep the hip and knee above the second toe, and we wanna keep the back fairly upright unless we're intentionally flexing forward. So the back's upright, squat down as far as we can with good form, and then back up. We can do that normally with the knee just bent, so we can do that in that position. And again, just squatting down. If we take a weight and hold that in front of us, so for example, I'm gonna hold this paint pot now, this is called a goblet squat, so by having the weight in front of us, it keeps our back more upright, which works our quads a little bit harder. So again, just holding that position, and then you can be holding anything to do that. If we want to work on hamstrings a little bit more, we can reach forward intensely, so rather than our back being upright for the quads, we're gonna deliberately reach forward now as we come down and we can work on different angles, and that's gonna work on our hamstrings a little bit harder. Most of you have been following this, so I'm a big fan of the rear foot elevated squat. So with that, we're just in a position where we're in a slight lunge position with the back leg, all the weights on the front leg. And again, we can just squat down there. We can do a power version by doing a little jump. So that's a running action, and then just up and round. When you're dealing with athletes, it's really important that you train the extensive chain. So that, quite simply, is just the back of the leg musculature. So you're looking at your gluteals and your hamstrings as well. So the classic to do that would be the RDL. So you're on one leg and then you're just pivoting at the hip. So the knee's not bending and we're just back and forth. The way of advancing that exercise is to increase the lever arm by having our hands up. So we can start with a nice knee up position. And then as we pivot, we're keeping them on those arms straight and that extra lever is really gonna add some load and you can decide to hold some weight, but that, believe me, that is quite an advance. Another important thing for athletes is to do, for the hamstrings in particular, is to do eccentric only contraction. So that's where you control the contraction as a muscle lengthening. it. An easy way to do that whole is to remove your trainer, make sure you're just not on a carpet surface, and then you should be able to achieve this next exercise. So you bridging up and then you slide in the foot out until it's straight and then we don't do any contraction on the way up we just return to the straight position and then slide out and by doing that it makes the muscle longer and stronger at the same time which is good for preventing injuries so next we're going to work on some core exercises and as we've discussed previously planks and side planks are really good 
core functional exercises. So how can we make them a bit more advanced? Well, one, we can add weight again, so we could use a rucksack, or we can alter our base of support. So I'm gonna concentrate on the latter now. Starting off with planks. So if we adopt the normal plank position, there's a couple of things we can do. We can move our legs, so it's just one base of support and hold that for a given time, and obviously swap sides. And we can do the same with our arms. So it can move out, or we can move it to the side, and we're aiming to stay perfectly square on as we do those things. If you come up to a push-up position, you can do both at the same time. So you can lift one arm and one leg, try to stay square on, and then obviously work the opposite pattern as you're going on there. If we move on to side planks, so side planks, we're a bit limited with our arm position, so we have to support that, so we can't do that, but we can alter our leg position. So we can go to one leg, we can move that up and down, or we can move it back and forth, and that can be really advanced core training. So we're gonna finish off now with our upper body exercises. With the upper body, we wanna work on push, and a pull pattern and we want to do that in a horizontal plane and we want to do that in a vertical plane ideally. Pushes, to be honest, they're a lot easier to accomplish at home but we'll finish off with the pulls and I'm sure we'll find something that you'll be able to achieve. So we're going to start off with pushes. So push-ups, as the name says, is a great pushing exercise. So I'm going to show you some more advanced versions that you can try at home. So first of all, in terms of power, a plyometric push-up is brilliant. So that's where you're pushing, so you're aiming to leave the ground. So you can do that with a clap or you can just leave the ground. So in this position, you're just coming up and trying to raise off. You can make sure you raise by putting into a push-up position each time you do one, okay? You can do different positions with your hands as well each time you do. So you can do wide to narrow. So you can go wide into narrow in terms of your pushes. And you can do offset back and forth as well. So you're just swapping hand positions there, just enforcing that air time, okay? So that's a really good way of doing it. There's a couple of variations I really like as well. They're a bit more advanced. So the first one I'll show you is called the butterfly one. We're gonna go for a wide position and I like to do it on my fingertips just to add a, a little bit of wrist, wrist strength. So we're going in a wide position, nice and straight, and then we're up and down. Much, much harder and great focus on your pectoral muscles rather than just your tricep muscles. Another one that I really like that was in the circuit the other day is called a frog one. So as we come down, we're decreasing that base of support but it increases the load on the arm musculature. So it's a great call and a push-up exercise as well. Brilliant exercise is a one-arm push-up. So now, one-arm push-ups are seen as really advanced in terms of strength, but it's more about technique and the course ability around that. So my tips on doing a one-arm push-up are, you first of all, you want a nice wide base position. So that's gonna give you more core control. So have your feet fairly wide, see one arm's down, so because we're unstable, to make us more stable, if we take the other arm and bring it across our arm, we're more centralised in that position. And then from there, just keep it nice and straight. You'll find it a lot more easy than if your arm's free there. So, they are my top tips for the one arm push-up. Okay, next one, good old dip. So, to make this as advanced as possible, you just want an elevated surface. You want your legs as far out as possible, so as straight as possible, it's easier there. To make it even more advanced, just lift one leg up and then you're going nice and deep on that. Once you're doing your next set, make sure you're swapping legs just to even out that core control. Now, most of us should be able to find a little corner within our kitchen or some raised surface. So again, these are really good for doing dips. So you just want to have your hands on either side and going down nice and deep. And that's a good place that most of us can achieve dips on. Okay, finishing off with shoulder pressing now, or vertical pressing, there's a couple of options you've got here. You can do a pipe version, which is a more moderate, advanced one. So you're getting in a position, so your feet are on a raised surface and you want to be what you call a pipe position. So you're bent at your waist, and then you're doing shoulder presses from that position. So they're quite difficult, and obviously the more your bum's up in the air, the harder that's going to be. The next one on for that is handstand push-ups. So try and get against a flat surface. You're just going into your handstand position, get nice and straight through the body is my main tip, and then you're just going down and up as much as you can in that position. 
So as I mentioned before, pulls are a little bit more difficult, but we're gonna finish off by showing you a few things that you can definitely achieve at home. So a classic for pull exercise is in a horizontal pull, it's a three point row. So if you can get something that's nice and heavy, an elevated surface, you just want to stabilize yourself through your knee and your hand, try and be side on, and then you just pull in that weight up towards your hip. So onto the classic pull up now. Some of you might be lucky enough to have a chin up bar in your house. If you haven't, I'm sure most of you will be, be able to get hold of some kind of frame around your stairs. So I'm gonna just show you a couple of exercises that you can do on any chin up, just to make them a little bit more advanced. So your classic pull up, I think we're just in this position. We're going nice and straight up to the top. So there's a couple of ways of making it harder. The first one that I'm going to show you is in a pipe position. So we're raising our feet. That's going to increase the load through it and increase the core uh, requirements on the exercise as well. So you're up, your legs are up in front of you. And you pull up like so. Another way of advancing it is to turn it into a bit of a row as well. So again, my legs are going to sweep through and then I'm going to pull from the other side. So I'll show you slightly from the opposite side. I won't be able to get my legs through as well this way but it'd be greater visualization so from this position i'm bringing my legs through and then it's more of a rowing exercise as i'm coming up so there are a couple of good variations you can do for pull-ups okay so our last exercise is an inverse row exercise so if you can find any surface you can get underneath and then hang on to the edges of it and pull your body up it's perfect so what i found at home works really well is that my trampoline. So it's just a matter of getting underneath it, into a position, and then I'm up there, and then I'm just rowing up, trying to keep the body nice and straight. So you can do that on a table edge or anything like that. So that's the end of today's series. And for the last one next week, before I return to my normal nine to five, we're gonna do an amalgamation of all the circuits that we've done in the previous week. So that should be enjoyable. So hope to see you then. Bye.